Well, we know that South Africa is currently awarding, awarding green power to tenders right now in the IPP bidding process. We've gone through one round in the process. And of course, on Monday, uh, bidders will know who won the second round in terms of megawatts. We know that uh, the first round attracted 1,415 megawatts of renewable energy power. And the second round, as I said, those announcement, that announcement will come through on, uh, on Monday to take us through the outcome of this and the likely, uh, t the likely uh, content that we're looking at from a local perspective. Gareth Blackenberg, energy analyst from Frost and Sutherland, uh, joining us from our Cape Town studios. Gareth, where are we in the process in terms of South Africa right now moving towards uh, green power? Just set the tone for us in terms of how much uh, renewable energy power we have in South Africa right now and where we are in the process of this procurement uh, process. Yeah, well, it's still very early in the whole process. We're just kicking off, uh, to be uh, to be sure. Um, uh, totally, as you mentioned, we've procured about 1,400 megawatts out of a total. I think South Africa has about just over 40,000 uh, megawatts of electricity generation. So it still uh, makes up quite a small percentage of our, our total energy mix. Um, yeah, this next round should see quite a few more uh, megawatts coming online. Um, but still, it's just going to be a small proportion of our, our overall mix. Gareth? Second round of tenders uh, closed on March the 5th and the announcement will be made on Monday. What do you expect? Um, Lindsay, I think uh, there'll be much more of the same. Um, I think some of the project developers who've already won projects in round one will again win further projects in round two. Obviously, the this capacity limit on, on project sizing of 140 megawatts means these guys have to submit for multiple projects mm. rather than one uh, large project. So I think uh, so, some of those guys who've won tenders already will win further, further, further rounds. How, um, how important is it to the to national grid? You gave you gave some uh, technical details there, talking about 40 40,000 versus 1,400, which this will introduce hopefully to the national grid. Is this just to appease the tree hugging greens, or is this actually a process that is going to gather momentum and will be meaningful for the South African energy uh, arena in the future? Um, I think at this stage it's quite hard to tell. Um, obviously uh, initially at the moment they're just looking for 3,725 megawatts in total so that still makes up a, a small proportion of our overall generation mix. Mm. Um, again they've just released details of uh, procurement for conventional power generation as well on the independent power producer side. So I guess those guys will, will make up a, a further proportion of it. So whether the mix will continue to be more in the renewable side or further on the conventional side I think it'll be hard to tell long term. Are the, um, are the foreigners eyeing this situation uh, generally? Sorry, Sam, just one, one second, just my last question. Uh, are the foreigners eyeing this uh, situation quite jealously and seeing a growth market in South Africa? Oh, absolutely, yeah. There's been huge interest from inter international developers. Um, I think the, the, the markets in Europe especially are quite mature. Um, the traditional markets of Spain and Germany um, and Italy as well. And, and a lot of those project developers are looking around the world for, for growth markets. So that's China, India and, and specifically South Africa is uh, one of the first countries in Africa to have a, a, an incentivization program for renewable power. Mm. Gareth, uh, just in terms of where the carbon market stands right now, we know that we've had what somewhat of a collapse of that carbon price. And uh, as you said, you've got to IPP for normal power coming online soon. So that, that has been ironed out at the moment. Are we looking at a situation where we're tilting away from green energy towards more conventional sources of energy? Because uh, financial close also needs to be reached for those few tenders. And uh, by, by some of the counts on the ground, you're looking at a situation where some of the projects that were awarded might not reach financial close. So what is your view on that right now? Um, I think on the renewable side, most of the projects that are, are, are reaching uh, the, the, the request for, I mean, sorry, the, the winning rounds in, in the IPP process, those, all those projects will get developed. Um, I think they're quite sophisticated bid uh, teams and, and the projects have gone through quite a number of hurdles to get, uh, get to the stage. Um, in terms of the carbon market, yeah, well, South Africa has committed to reducing its carbon dioxide uh, emissions quite substantially by 2020 and then further by 2025, I think approximately 42% from uh, business as usual currently. Um, so those are quite substantial reductions that need to be achieved. And if we don't move a little bit towards the renewable side, I think uh, those will be hard to achieve as well. What about the dismantling of the, uh, the state-owned uh, power monopoly, if you like? Is this a step towards that? Or as I said earlier on, is it just a sort of a, a gesture? Um, again, yeah, hard to tell. At the moment, it's, it's a bit of a gesture, I suppose, because it is such a small proportion. But uh, they are looking to procure about 30% from uh, IPPs. So I think uh, the process is underway. The establishment of an independent systems market operator is, is underway as well. So that should see more liberalization of the, of the market in total. Very encouraging. Certainly.
Okay, so I'll, I'll bat in now with my question, uh, Lindsay. In terms of local content, uh, round one, you're looking at a minimum of 25% for the bids and a target of 45%. Round two, 25%. That has been increased to 60%. And round three, you're looking at a minimum 40% target there for local content and that going up to 65%. How does this impact uh, bidders right now when we know that local content sources are very scarce? We don't have big manufacturing presence in South Africa with regards to renewable energy production. Certainly, as yet, the local content definition is local spend. So the, the content is, is total project spending in South Africa. So at the moment, I think project developers are able to get by with spending on EPC and, and, the, and the likes, doing EIAs and whatnot. Um, as those uh, percentages go up, I think uh, the, the local manufacturing will start to rise. I think that will become more of a crucial component as the percentages get higher and higher, and especially above and towards 50%. But do we have the yeah, skills the for that? Between the type of projects. Sorry, Sam, you go for it this time. I'm going to go for it because I just want to harp on this project issue right now because speaking to people on the ground, do we have the skills, do we have the capacity to supply the renewable energy sector in South Africa? Because by all accounts and purposes, they're saying at this point in time, we don't. Um, I, I think a lot of the skills are, are being Im imported with the development side, especially from Europe. Um, in terms of the local manufacturing, there are guys who are already making solar PV panels. Um, there's a crowd in Cape Town who are already making wind turbine blades. So I think uh, as the requirements go up, the, the need will, will rise as well. Um, I think uh, the development of the local market and the local manufacturing will rise uh, along with it. Gareth, just a final question. What's the sort of split of projects? I mean, is it wind? Is it solar? What's the most popular? What's the most viable? What is the, the, the long-term future of renewable energy in South Africa? Um, at the moment, in terms of procurement, uh, wind and PV have been, solar PV have been the, the two dominant players. Um, in terms of the integrated resource plan, long-term for South Africa, those are the two highest target allocations. Um, solar CSP as well as uh, sort of strong-term prospects as well because it has a storage aspect to it. So I guess that lets it to compete with the conventional power generations, providing uh, uh, power all day long and I suppose into the night and the peak demand times as well.